professor of space physics and uh, director of geophysical observatory of Sodankyla, Eija Tanskanin. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Uh, so, we have all kinds of data in here, uh, can you tell us, can we see northern lights this evening, from telling from this data? It is, it is not straightforward to predict auroras, Yeah. so it's never 100% sure, but there are very high possibilities. Okay. When we see some certain signatures in the data, some sec secret signatures in the data. Okay. And I will now tell you the secret. <laughs> two two um, important parameters to look at is also this red curve, other red curve, which mm. is interplanetary magnetic field. Okay. And this is the speed. It is the speed of the solar wind, so how fast the particles mm. are moving. And when the solar wind I mean, it's really strong, then there will be bigger uh, auroras, right? Yes, more intense auroras. Yes. yes, exactly. And now the speed is pretty low. The average solar wind speed is 400 kilometers per second. Okay. And it is one order of magnitude faster than bullet. So 10 times faster than any bullet. <laughs> so it's pretty fast. <laughs> pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and whenever the speed exceeds like 500, 600, then we will get more intense auroras. Okay. And more wide area, in more wide area. Yeah. So that's what you can see there. But even with these low speeds, you can uh, have a high possibility to see auroras because you can see here this red curve going up and down. Okay. So those are all kind of waves, alvenic waves and ULF waves, whatever you can find in solar wind. And, and whenever we have those, mm. it means that we are getting plasma and that plasma and particles, they are causing aurora. Okay. So, yeah. so that's why also this one shows you the high possibility for aurora. Okay. Well, we have kind of wood. Yes. <laughs> and, and this can be used to predict about one hour beforehand. Okay. So. It doesn't tell yet us for the night. No, really well. yeah. no, not. But typically these twinkles continue. Okay. When they start, then they continue for six, seven, eight hours easily. Okay. okay. So in that sense, yes, when this starts, then you mm. can be pretty sure that you you will see it. If if we want to go even more longer predictions, then we need to go for other service, which is like solar monitor. Yeah, so this is sun. This is sun. Yeah. And now we have a lot of these active regions. Okay. People typically call them sunspots. But as you can see, the structure is very complex. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a spot. <laughs> it's not a spot. So that's why we call it active region. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big areas, yeah. which is a lot. Okay. So any of these can have a flaring and that flaring causes the solar wind to be fast and bumpy or those twinkles mm -hmm. and then it means auroras. Yep. And and particularly this one, we, we give uh, numbers for each of them. Yeah. Or scientific community give numbers for each of them. And this one three four nine zero is very complex. So there is a way to measure how complex they are. So this one is very complex and it's pointing towards us. Mm. So now we can tell you that it's very probable that this will release energy. Yeah, and when it will release energy, how long it will take that we will have our own here? One to two days. Okay. And now when we see that speed is low, it takes two days. Okay. If it would be faster, it would come here one and a half days or even one day. Okay. So that's how to predict auroras. <laughs> simple. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> 